says, uh, I was wondering if you could explain on True Set Free how to spot a false prophet. And if a pastor is pointing you to Jesus during a service, but may have a different view on some scripture, does that make them a false teacher? Um, you know, it's, it, it, is, it is really important to be paying attention to what guys are saying about the Bible. Um, Jesus, Jesus talked about the, the fact, and not only Jesus, but in almost every uh, letter that you have in the New Testament, there are warnings about false prophets and false teachers. Um, when, whenever I um, am looking for a passage that speaks specifically to the issue of false, false teachers, I usually go to the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7, and it says here, uh, in verse 15, Jesus says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Okay, and so what that tells you right there is that you can look like a sheep, you can act like a sheep, you can deceive people into thinking that you're sheep, but on the inside, you're a ravenous wolf. And so false prophets aren't going aren't to be something that you can necessarily identify, identify by what they look like, how they dress, and that kind of stuff, um, where they're at, the, those kinds of things. He goes on and he says, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a dra- bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. And so when I'm looking at a teacher or I'm looking at somebody who says that they're a prophet, I look at the fruit that they're supposed to have, right? And so that fruit can be talking about their lifestyle. And so there's some passages, for example, in uh, 2 Peter in in chapter 2, I'll, I'll, I'll go through that passage in a minute, but it talks about guys who are covetous, who, who are just in it for the money, and guys who are fleshy, who are in it for what they can get from people, including sexual stuff. Uh, uh, th- those kinds of guys are obviously somebody who is not following the Lord and who is not uh, to be listened to. But in this passage, he's talking about the fruit of a prophet, the fruit of a teacher, right? And so what's the fruit of a prophet? Prophecy. Yeah, it's the prophecy. It's what they're, what they're saying is the fruit of a prophet. And so when I talk to Mormons, they like to go to this passage and they say, well, you know, just look at the fruit of the Mormon church. Uh, and so they're, they're supposed to be prophets of God. Look at what our guys do, they, you know, and they'll have a list. And so, for example, they give 20% in tithe uh, if they're a good Mormon. And um, that helps them to get into the temple for temple marriage and, and that kind of stuff. And they have family home evening and they, they've got, uh, it has to do with having a nice family and that kind of stuff. They do all these different things and they go, Jesus said that you look at the fruit and our fruit is good, therefore we're true prophets. And what I tell them is that your fruit, you're coming here telling me that Joseph Smith is a prophet of God and I don't care if he tithes or not because that's not his fruit. His fruit is what he prophesied. What has he been saying about who God is? What has he been saying about how you get saved? What has he been saying about these things? And the same thing with Jehovah's Witnesses in the Watchtower. I'll do the same thing with them. I go, I want to have the, the, the fruit of your prophets are the things that they've spoken. And if they've ever spoken a false prophecy, guess what that makes them? And if, if they've ever given false teaching, then guess what that makes them? And so, yeah, it's important to make sure that you're paying attention to those things. You don't want to pick people apart um, on the other hand, uh, because y- you're allowed to go through the, you know, the most, most of what the Bible has to say is pretty straightforward. And so there's not a lot of interpretations. But there are, are, there are a few passages that people come up with different interpretations on. And so some of those passages can be, for example, like the, like the parables of Jesus. If Jesus doesn't flat out tell you what the parable means, it's open to interpretation and so, you know, it's, it's like it's one of those things where I've heard uh, different guys say different things in different contexts, and I give them a break on that because I may not agree with what they're saying, but Jesus didn't, you know, nail it. He didn't tell you exactly what was going on. 
And you have that in a number of places. In uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, it talks about false teachers. And uh, in verse 10, it says they're presumptuous and self-willed. That's arrogance. In In verse 12, it says that they're fleshy. They speak evil of things they don't understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption. Um, will receive the waves, wages of unrighteousness, their spots and blemishes, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. And so the second uh, identifier is they're fleshy. Third identifier is in verse 15, they're greedy. Um, they've gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Um, and so greedy. And then uh, they are people who are flatterers. Verse 18, when they speak with uh, great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh and through lewdness the ones who have actually escaped. And that talks about appeals to your flesh. And then finally, they're unfaithful to Jesus. Um, uh, it, it talks about while they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of depravity or corruption, for by whom a man is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. And so you have some more descriptions there. There's other other passages that that do the same thing, but obviously you're looking at lifestyle. If their lifestyle's all tweaked and it's not something that, and, and I'm not talking about perfection, but if it's not something that uh, is glorifying to Christ, if they're involved in adultery and fornication and all this kind of stuff, and they have all these other things going on, if they're greedy, if they're fleshy, then they're not somebody you want to be around. You know, you want to be around somebody who's a mature Christian. And, uh, you know, if every time you're going to the Bible study, uh, you're, you're having to go through and try to figure out whether or not what he's saying is really true and, and that kind of thing. You know, there's, a, there's a good um, standard for listening to teaching. And what you do is you eat the meat, you throw away the bones. Okay. So when I'm listening to teaching, there's going to be good stuff in there. And um, so if, if I see something that I don't think that the scripture actually is teaching and, you know, the, the guy's immature or he's got a tweaked idea about something, it's like, it, it, can, it can be a deal breaker with me if it's talking about Jesus. Uh, but on the other hand, if it's just talking about some incidental thing, then it's bones and I throw it away. It's like eating chicken, right? But if it's all bones and it's very little meat, I don't want to eat it. And so I'll move on and go go someplace else. That's a good description. Yeah.